Birdsbookbits.com presents Do the Work, Do the Work, Overcome Resistance, and Get Out of Your Own Way by Stephen Pressfield. Could you be getting in your way of producing great work? Have you started on a project but never finished? Would you like to do the work that matters, but don't know where to start? The answer is Do the Work, a manifesto by best-selling author Stephen Pressfield that will show you that it's not about better ideas, it's about actually doing the work. Do the Work is a weapon against resistance, a tool that will help you take action and successfully ship projects out the door. Do the Work takes the reader from the start to the finish of any long-term form project novel, screenplay, album, software piece, you name it. Do the Work identifies at predictable resistance points along the way and walks you through each of them. No, you are not crazy. No, you are not alone. No, you are not the first person to hit the wall in Act 2. Do the Work charts the territory it's the stage-by-stage roadmap for taking your project from page one to the end. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Do the Work. Do the Work Summary. The following list in, in no particular order of those activities that are most commonly elicit resistance. Number one, the pursuit of any calling in writing, painting, music, film, dance, or any creative art however marginal or unconventional. Number two, the launching of any entrepreneurial adventure or enterprise for profit or otherwise. Three, any diet or health regime. And number four, any program of spiritual advancement. Five, any activities whose aim is the acquisition of chiseled abdominals. Number six, any course or program designed to overcome an unwholesome habit or addiction. And seven, education of every kind. Number eight, any act of political, moral, or ethical courage, including the decision to change for the better some unworthy pattern of thought or conduct in ourselves. And number nine, the undertaking of any enterprise or endeavor whose aim is to help others. Ten, any act that entrails commitment of the heart, the decision to get married, to have a child, to weather a rocky patch in a relationship. And number 11, the taking of any principled stand in the face of adversity. In other words, any act that rejects immediate gratification in favor of long-term growth, health, or integrity. Resistance is a repelling force. Resistance is a repelling force. It's negative. Its aim is to shove us away, distract us, prevent us from doing our work. Resistance will reason with you like a lawyer or jam in a 9mm in your face like a stick man. Resistance is always lying and always full of shit. Though it feels malevolent, resistance is, in fact, operates with the indifference of rain and transits the heavens by the same laws as stars. When we marshal our forces to combat resistance, we must remember this. Rule of thumb, the more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we will feel toward pursuing it. The warrior and the artist live by the same code of necessity, which dictates that the battle must be fought anew every day. Resistance aims to kill. We want to work from the self, that is from instinct and intuition, from the unconscious. The last thing we want is to remain as we are. Prepare yourself to make new friends. They will appear, trust me. Ignorance and arrogance are the artist and entrepreneur's indispensability allies. She must be clueless enough to have no idea how difficult her enterprise is going to be and cocky enough to believe she can pull it off anyway. A child has no trouble believing that unbelievable, nor does a genius or the madman. It's only you and I, with our big brains and our tiny hearts, who doubt and overthink and hesitate. Don't think, act. Don't think, act. We can always revise and revisit once we've acted, but we can accomplish nothing until we act. Be stubborn. Once we commit to action, the worst thing we can do is to stop. We're in till the finish. We will sink our junkyard dog teeth into resistance ass and not let go, no matter how hard the kicks. Our mightiest ally, our indispensable ally, is the belief in something we cannot see, hear, touch, taste, or feel. You may think that you lost your passion, or that you can't identify it, or that you have so much of it, it threatens to overwhelm you. None of this is true. When we conquer our fears, we discover a boundless, bottomless, inexhaustible well of passion. Remember, our enemy is not lack of preparation. It's not the difficulty of the project or the state of the marketplace or the emptiness of our bank account. The enemy is our chattering brain. The enemy 
is our chattering brain, which, if we give it so such as a nanosecond, will start producing excuses, alibis, transparent self-justifications, and a million reasons why we can't, shouldn't, wouldn't do what we know we need to do. Start before you're ready. You're allowed to read three books on your subject, no more. Let the unconscious do its work. Research can become resistance. We want to work, not prepare to work. Discipline yourself to boil down your story, new business, philanthropic enterprise to a single page. Do you love your idea? Does it feel right on instinct? Are you willing to bleed for it? Get your idea down on paper. You can always tweak it later. Figure out where you want to go, then work backwards from there. End first, then beginning and middle. That's your startup. That's your plan for completing the triathlon. That's your ballet. We can never eliminate resistance. We can never eliminate resistance. It will never go away, but we can outsmart it, and we can enlist allies that are as powerful as it is. Do research early or late. Don't stop working. Never do research in the prime working time. Research can be fun. It can be seductive. That's its danger. We need it. We love it. But we must never forget that research can become resistance. Any project or enterprise can be broken down into the beginning, middle, and end. Fill in the gaps, then fill in the gaps between the gaps. One rule for the first full working drafts, get them done ASAP. This draft is not being graded. There will be no pop quiz. Only one thing matters in this initial draft. Get something done, however flawed or imperfect. You are not allowed to judge yourself. Stay stupid. Follow your unconventional, crazy heart. Ideas come according to their own logic. That logic is not rational. It's not linear. We may get the middle before we get the end. We may get the end before we get to the beginning. Be ready for this. Don't resist it. Nothing is more fun than turning on the recorder and hearing your own voice telling you a fantastic idea that you had completely forgotten you had. Forget rational thought. Play. Play like a child. Our job is not to control our idea. Our job is to figure out what idea is and wants to be. And then bring it into being. And bring it into being. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working. Ask yourself what's missing. Then fill that void. Principles of resistance. Number one, principle number one, there is an enemy. Principle number two, the enemy is implacable. And number three, the enemy is inside you. Four, the enemy is inside you, but it is not you. And number five, the real you must duel the resistance you. And principle number six, resistance arises second. And last, principle seven, the opposite of resistance is assistance. There is an enemy. There is an intelligent, active, malign force working against us. Step one is to recognize there is an enemy. This recognition alone is enormously powerful. It saved my life and it will save yours. You are not to blame for your voices of resistance you hear in your head. If you've got a head, you've got a voice of resistance inside of it. Resistance to test. According to Pressfield, resistance puts two questions to each of us and all of us. Each question has only one correct answer. Test number one, how bad do you want it? Test number two, why do you want it? If your answer is not totally committed, put this book down and throw it away. If you've checked for fun or beauty because I had no choice, you get to stay on the island. The big crash is so predictable across all fields of enterprise that we can practically set our watches by it. Crashes are hell by the end of it. They're good for us. A crash means we have failed. We gave it everything we had and we came up short. A crash does not mean we are losers. A crash means we have to grow. A crash means we're at the threshold of learning something, which means we're getting better. We're acquiring the wisdom of our craft. A crash compels us to figure out what works and what doesn't work, and to understand the difference. Whatever the cause, the big crash compels us to go back now and solve the problem that we either created directly or set in motion unwittingly at the outset. Our greatest fear is fear of success. Our greatest fear is fear of success. When we experience panic, it means that we're about to cross a threshold. We're poised on the doorstep of a higher plane. No matter how great a writer or artist or entrepreneur, he is immortal. He is fallible. He is not proof against resistance. He will drop the ball. He will crash. It takes balls of steel to ship. When we ship, we're exposed. 
When we ship, we open ourselves to the judgment in the real world. Nothing is more empowering because it plants us solely on planet Earth and gets us out of our self-devouring, navel-centered fantasies and self-delusions. And that's a wrap on Do The Work. Subscribe to our channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. If you like reading and want to get involved in sharing knowledge and joining the channel and spreading great book summaries, connect with myself by emailing info at bestbookbits.com. Thanks for watching and listening and have yourself an amazing day. Take care.